Okay, we are on. A new day, a new day has dawned in Abu Dhabi. I'm with my relatively small eight chemistry class. We've got Colorado, we've got Jordan, Palestine, um, Lebanon, right? Mm -hmm. UAE, Korea, Denmark, and Korea. Wow, two Koreans in the same place. I like that. Excellent, I like that. South Korea, right? North Korea, South Korea? South Korea. South Korea. She laughed when I said North Korea. Like, what are you crazy? Okay. Um, I have no hits. I have hits from like 135 countries, but no hits from North Korea. So if you have any friends in North Korea, tell them to go watch my video. Do you have friends in North Korea? No. Would you ever admit that you had friends in North Korea? No. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there are nice people in North Korea just like you. Yeah. I'm sure there are very nice people. Okay. I'm sure there's an Ellen who's a chemistry student in North Korea, right? Okay, so let's talk about Hantaro Nagaoka. Is that right? Shall we say that together? Hantaro Nagaoka. Sounds Japanese. Is it Japanese? Yes. Okay, Japanese. How do you spell Japanese? Oops, I misspelled it completely there, didn't I? Okay, I can spell. Wow, green is really... Green is like very hard to erase. Japanese, right? And what what was he, when was he born? When was he born? When did he die? 1865. 1865. Great year. To when? 1950. 1950. Wow. So he was like in his 80s when he died, huh? 85. He was 85 when he died. Excellent. Excellent. Now, um, he really is quite an amazing character. Um, I have my students, uh, BYOD, bring your own device, and they are looking things up about Nagaoka, yeah? And uh, Professor Nagaoka, uh, Dr. Nagaoka to you. Anyway, um, one thing he did, get the, are you ready for this? They're gonna be amazed. He converted mercury to gold. He was the first true yeah, he was the first true alchemist. Darth Vader is very excited. Listen, listen. <laughs> Can you hear that? Are you frightened? Wow, huh? So, so, so Darth Vader is very amazed at that. But yeah, look that up. Look that up. We're gonna say we're gonna put Mountains on that. He's our resident Dane. Uh, yeah. Well, there's a difference between people who know everything and people. Like people who, who are know-it-alls? Well, he's not know-it-all. Uh, well, knows. there are people, he knows everything. everything. But that's not a know-it-all. Yeah. Yeah, like Mohammed would be a know-it-all because he pretends to know everything, right? <laughs> okay, now, so he converted, he was the first true alchemist. He was a successful, successful, is that spelled correctly, successful? You know, there was a time, there was a Time Magazine article back in the early 80s which talks about teachers, how they're functionally illiterate. I'm functionally illiterate. Can't spell. Terrible. And, and people are becoming that way with computers. You have spell check. You don't really have to spell correctly, do you? You just have to be able to approximate what the word is, don't you? Isn't it amazing? Yeah. So, successful alchemists. Is that right? Is that spelled correctly? Alchemist? Can we do a spell check? I have human yeah, spell checkers that's right. here. That's right? Okay. He converted mercury to gold. Electricity. Yeah, using what? Electricity. Using electricity. Using electricity. Isn't that amazing? Amazing, huh? He did it, yeah. He did it. And and when did he do? When did he do that? What year? 1924. What is it? 1924. 1924. Amazing. How many people think that that's amazing? The Koreans don't think so. They're not raising their hand. That's very suspicious. They know something we don't know. Do you think that's amazing? Ellen says, Ellen. Edward, do you think that's amazing? Edward's very quiet. Edward, do you think that's amazing? Yes. He does. Edward says yes. Excellent. Now, 
What else did he do? Now, what you're going to find is that you're going to find that all of these scientists were contemporaries of each other, scientists that I've talked about in my other tape, like Rutherford, J.J. Thompson, Dalton. Who else? Well, Dalton was an older guy, but uh, Rutherford. Rutherford, De Broglie. And you'll find that they, came, they had similar ideas. Like, we talked about the wave-particle duality of nature, right? And we're going to talk about Louis de Broglie in the next film, and he really was the guy that pioneered that. He said that, and they, they sent his work. Louis, we're doing a, a Louis de Broglie commercial. He said that, essentially, that, that light can be both particles and waves, and people heard that, and they thought it was, they thought it was dead crap. And they sent the work to Einstein and others, and they said, yeah, that makes sense. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So we, they all have a hand. They all helped each other. That's why science has always been the one thing that crosses political boundaries from one country to the next. This idea of standardization and working together. Yeah, amazing stuff. So what else did he do? Somebody said something about 1904. What, what did you say there? Madam? An early planetary model of the atom. Okay, he had an early Saturn. planetary model of the atom. Now, who had, who did we talk about already that had sort of like a planetary model of the atom? Bohr. Yeah, Niels Bohr, the Danish guy, right? Mountains raised his hand right away. Okay. Mountains is Danish. And uh, I never met a Dane before. It's really kind of neat. I did, wasn't sure that Dane, that Denmark existed. So I have a witness that it was, it's actually there. I just thought it might be some kind of public relations thing, you know. Who knows? Who knows? You know, somebody created it on a map, but it's not really there, but it's there. I like that. Excellent. We have a witness that Denmark exists. Now, what else did he do? Now, you can see that that's, there's some Bohr influence there, or did he influence Bohr? He influenced Bohr. Yeah. He, this guy, nobody's ever heard of him. You know, you've heard of Bohr, de Broglie, Chadwick, but Bohr was influenced by this gentleman here. So what else? What else did he do? And that was 1904, wasn't it? Wasn't it 1904? Yes, 1904. Yeah, it was 1904. You also said that uh, there's... We have something else here from Ishmael. Yes, Ishmael. That, that the atom has a large nucleus that's uh, positive. The atom has... Oh, I like that. Uh, he did... He... He did... Uh, how do you spell nucleus? Did I misspell nucleus? N -U -C I love to pretend I can't do things, and they're very helpful that way. They're only helpful if I pretend I'm helpless. That's a teacher ploy. How do you spell that? N U C. N U C. L E U S. He came up with the nucleus. The nucleus was large. Uh, it's positively charged. Well, when you think of the nucleus as being big, and dense and hard and positively charged. What what scientists do you think of? We did it. I did it. I did it yesterday in yesterday's chemistry class, and I put it on the web already. It starts with R. Rutherford. And what was the experiment? The gold foil experiment. The gold foil experiment. Bless you. So I'm going to tell this class what I said to the last class. Get this. I'm going to be brief though. Piece of tissue paper, right? Now. There's something called momentum. Momentum, the letter rho, lowercase rho, like the Phillies, the Phillies, Philadelphia Phillies baseball team, the letter rho, looks like a P. And that equals the mass times velocity, right? What Rutherford did was he hammered out this gold foil which was so thin, it was just a few atoms thick. It was so thin. And he shot these alpha particles. What did they just do? I wrote the alpha letter with four over two. What this means is, 
An alpha particle is a helium nucleus without the electrons. It's just the nucleus of the helium. So it's very small, very small, right? But he shot, he shot this gold foil with this extremely, when I say extremely, the momentum, very small mass. Can you read that? Very small mass, right? You can hardly see that on the camera. But this enormous velocity, enormous velocity. So it had a lot of momentum. It's like a rifle bullet. You ready? You ready? You ready? Let me erase this for a second. I'm very excited about this. I do this in physics, right? You take a rifle bullet, which maybe is that big, and it has a small mass but a huge velocity. Yes? You take an enormous truck, right? Okay, that's Mohammed driving the truck. Okay. Yeah, Mohammed's driving the truck. He's a truck driver. He does it part time after school. Yeah. So he's driving a truck, and then it has a large mass, but a small velocity. Same momentum. Isn't that interesting? Yes, you get that? Isn't that? Did you ever think of that before? So a bullet, a high powered bullet, could have the same momentum as a giant truck, right? So next time you're driving behind the wheel, be careful. You guys aren't driving yet. When, you, when can you drive in 18. the Emirates? 18. 18. I like that, 18. That's good. There are some states in the United States at 16. In Colorado, what is it? It's 16, but you can get your permit at 15. Yeah, there's something. I want, I want you to read something for me. She said you can get your permit at 15 in Colorado. There's something called the frontal lobe. Fifteen-year-olds have one, but it's not wired really well. It doesn't get really wired until your late teens, early twenties. So you have this, that's where you do all your thinking, right here. Yeah, that's why you go to school. It helps you wire your frontal lobe. Yeah, so you can make good decisions. Yeah, fifteen years old, fifteen years old. Yeah, but that's sight. I'm talking about the frontal lobe, which helps you to think critically. Emotions, human thought. They make you go through like 30 hours of driver's 30 ed. 30 hours of driver's ed. It should be 130. It should be 1,030. You shouldn't get your license until you're at least 40. Right. I'm you okay. I'm, 50, so I'm 57. You walk. Take buses. Mass transit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mass transit. Okay. <clears throat> so, you have, you have these, these alpha particles. Fast. High, large momentum, right? Small but large velocity, right? Now, what happens is this. This is what Rutherford, that was kind of a long prologue, right? But this is what he found, okay? Mountainous is getting impatient with me. He wants me to get to the point, so let me hurry. Okay. He does, right? Isn't that true? Yeah. So what happened was he would shoot this, he would shoot the, he would shoot the gold foil with, and what would happen is, some of them would kind of like go this way. Some of them would kind of go this way. So they're either hitting an object and being deflected, some incredibly dense object that has a lot of, a lot of inertia, it means it has a large mass, it's very dense, okay? That's, that's or it's, it's also a combination of charge too, okay? There's a negative charge too, because the alpha particle has a, has a plus charge. Okay, plus two charge, right? And then some of the particles, this is what is amazing, some of the particles would bounce back. And, and in terms of momentum changes, right? In terms of momentum changes, you know what that was similar to? These guys are completely unimpressed, so what, right? Because they're really small, right? That was, a scientist said, that was similar to a tissue paper being shot at by a six inch shell, artillery shell, high powered artillery shell, and what would happen if that tissue paper made that shell bounce back, right back to the gun? How many people find that unbelievable? They all do, you do, right? It's, it's silliness almost, isn't it? It's so silly, it's un, it's, you're unimpressed, it's so silly. But that's what this was the same thing as, that it was that the 
the artillery shell, the six inch artillery shell was ricocheted back. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. So therefore, the density, the density and the size of that gold nucleus must have been, must have been tremendous, utterly tremendous. All right, what else about Nagaoka? So there's a connection with the scientist. So he came with nucleus positively charged, large, probably, I'm, I'm sure that he said something about the density, a high density too, probably. What else? Electrons, electrons revolving around the nucleus bound, are bound by electrostatic forces. Okay, so he, he talked about electrostatic forces. So that the, so you have the nucleus, and then around the nucleus, you have these electrons that are orbiting. You have the plus nucleus, and then you have the negative electrons revolving around the nucleus because of this electrostatic. The electrons are not being conducted, they're just being attracted to the nucleus. So that's probably related to the planetary model of the atom, where you have this orbiting system. And again, that's very much... Now, this is... I'm going to give you a challenge. I'm going to give everybody a challenge. When you say electrostatic forces and charge, who came up with the charge of an electron? Who worked on the charge of an electron? Um, um, that one guy. Thompson. No. Well, they all did. I mean, they all worked on that. Millikan worked on that, and we'll talk about Millikan in another film. But what about, listen to very carefully. You ready? People think of this person as a politician, statesman, diplomat. They don't think of him when they hear this name. They don't think of him as being a scientist. But he was one of the true groundbreaking, uh, he was one of the first scientists to come up with some groundbreaking information on electricity. And that was Benjamin Franklin. Called it. Benjamin Franklin, yeah. He was an American statesman, politician, diplomat. All around, pretty nice guy from all accounts uh, in the mid 18th century. Yeah. What else? Anything else about Nagaoka? I think that's a lot, don't you think? Yeah, what else? Anything else? Okay, let's, let's stop with Nagaoka. Hey, look, if he just turned mercury into gold, that's enough for me. It's amazing. But this is what I want you to walk away with. Okay, this is amazing. That's amazing. But this is what I want you to walk away from. The connection among all of these scientists and how there's a relationship with ideas and the building of ideas. You didn't all of a sudden say, we can invent an atomic bomb or we can invent nuclear energy, which is literally millions of times more effective than gas or coal or anything, hydrocarbon emissions, etc. You didn't just invent the atomic bomb. That went through a, 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 an amazing series of scientists working together and building on their work and accepting their work and replicating their work and reproducing their work through standardization, standard methodologies, standard ways of measurement. Chapter 3, we worked on significant figures, accuracy, and precision. Now, do you understand the reason why we might have done that? Yeah, okay. We're off.